<laughs> Madam Chancellor, Chair of the Board, Mr. President, graduates, and honored guests. It is my pleasure and privilege to present our honorary doctoral recipient, Robert Thursk. Dr. Thursk has a perspective on our planet that few people have. He has flown on two space missions as a member of the Canadian Space Agency's astronaut corps. In 1996, Dr. Thursk flew aboard the Space Shuttle Columbia with six international crewmates as part of the LIFE and Microgravity Space Lab mission. This 17-day mission was devoted to the study of life and materials science. In 2009, he launched aboard a Russian Soyuz spacecraft to the International Space Station ISS. As members of the ISS crew, Dr. Thursk and his crewmates performed cutting-edge interdisciplinary research from around the world, robotic operations and maintenance and repair work on the station's systems and payloads. He was aboard the International Space Station for six months, the first Canadian to serve on an expedition of such a long duration there. When he returned to Earth, Dr. Thirsk had lived and worked in space for 188 days. He resigned as an astronaut and left the Canadian Space Agency in 2012 to join the Canadian Institutes of Health Research here in Ottawa as Vice President of Public Government and Institute Affairs. He oversaw 13 institutes dedicated to specific healthcare issues such as aging and cancer research. In 2014, Dr. Thursk retired from the federal government and began a four-year appointment as Chancellor of the University of Calgary. He is a strong promoter of a national economy based upon exploration and innovation. He takes every opportunity to encourage youth to work outside of their comfort zone, to participate in collaborative, team-oriented ventures, and to pursue audacious dreams. He recommends that these dreams be built upon a solid foundation of advanced skills and lifelong learning. Dr. Thursk is an adjunct faculty member at International Space University and works with educational specialists across Canada to develop space-related curricula for young students. He now leads a national task force assessing a potential role for Canada in deep space astronaut healthcare. Dr. Thursk was born and raised in Western Canada. He received degrees in mechanical engineering from the University of Calgary and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He also holds a doctorate of medicine from McGill University and a master of business administration from the MIT Sloan School of Management. He has been honored with the Order of British Columbia, the Outer Space Exploration Medal of Merit from Russia, and the NASA Distinguished Public Service Medal. He has also been awarded the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal and is an officer 
of the Order of Canada. Madam Chancellor, in recognition of his outstanding career as a Canadian astronaut, his many contributions to scientific and health research, and his promotion of science education and lifelong learning, I request that you confer the degree of Doctor of Engineering Honors Causa upon Robert Thirsk. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors and upon the recommendation of the University Senate, I confer upon you the de degree of Doctor of Engineering Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Madam Chancellor, Mr. Vice Chancellor, Chair of the Board of Governors, graduates, and honored guests, good afternoon. Thank you to Carleton University, a dynamic and innovative institution within a vital city for this recognition. It is indeed an honor. The lead up to this extraordinary day brought to mind many remarkable events and influential people who launched me on a satisfying career trajectory. And in the next minutes, I would like to share with you a few of these events and, and people. Let's start with spaceflight. I remember the launch of my first mission aboard the space shuttle Columbia. Six seconds before liftoff, the shuttle's three main engines ignite with a roar. The onboard computers check to ensure that each engine reached at least 90% of its rated thrust within the next three seconds. They did, so the onboard computer then sent a command to the two solid rocket boosters at T minus 0.3 of a second to ignite. And these boosters instantly reach full thrust. At T equals zero, the eight huge bolts, and I'm talking about bolts that are this size, which held the shuttle onto the launch pad exploded. The shuttle, now freed, leapt from the launch pad under a fury of smoke and flame. And as Columbia cleared the launch tower, the five engines were burning propellant at the rate of 11 tons per second. On board, we experienced noise, uh, noise and bone rattling vibration. In less than a minute, we had broken the sound barrier. In two minutes, and at over 40 kilometers high, the solid rocket boosters had used up all of their propellant, so they were jettisoned. And we rode the rest of the way up to orbit on the remaining three engines. At seven minutes, under the G load, it felt like three people were sitting on my chest, and my breathing became labored. And at eight and a half minutes, the three main engines shut down, and we were all flung forward in our seat harnesses as the G level dropped instantly from three Gs to zero. And the shuttle then began to coast silently through the inky blackness of space at a speed of eight kilometers per second. My crewmates and I floated up out of our seats. We welcomed each other to orbit with a lot of joyous hooting, hollering, and, and high fives because we had just survived one of the more dangerous things that human beings do. What a thrill. Decades ago, as a brand new university graduate, I remember reflecting on my future. At that time, I could not have predicted upcoming opportunities. 
I couldn't anticipate that one day I would sit atop four million pounds of explosive propellant and launch to space, that I would go on to serve my country as a representative on a long-duration space expedition, that I would, at such a festive gathering filled with pomp and circumstance, wear a convocation robe and be honored by Carleton University. Even today, as we reflect, the thoughts that each of us hold in our minds about our futures are incomplete and incorrect. Our futures will not resemble our current notions for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the opportunities that will be presented to us in coming years will be grander than what we can imagine today. And yes, many of the problems we will face will be unforeseen. A few of the exciting opportunities facing 21st century society, such as artificial intelligence and the exploration of deep space, are expected. Some of the problems we will face, such as climate change and growing inequality, are also known. But many others are not. Some opportunities, possibly related to rapid technological change, cannot be anticipated. Some problems, possibly related to the disruption of traditional industries, will take us by surprise. And that is the reason why Carleton University focuses on the training of skills. Skills like creative risk taking to equip young leaders to face the coming years, to enable minds to connect, discover, and generate transformative knowledge, and to create a more sustainable and prosperous nation. My last space mission was aboard the International Space Station. Did you know that station astronauts do not train prior to flight for specific tasks? Our training focuses instead on acquiring generic, all-encompassing skills. Spacewalking skills, robotic skills, rendezvous skills, as well as non-technical skills such as self-management, teamwork, and leadership. We train for skills rather than tasks because space station expeditions are months long. We have no idea prior to launch what malfunctions and what contingency situations will arise later during the mission. We need to be ready for anything. The currency of trade for an astronaut is skills training. Give me enough training and I can do anything. The currency of trade for 21st century graduates is also skills training. Career dreams are not achieved by wishing on a star. Ideal jobs do not fall out of the sky into our laps. The secret to achieving career goals is the acquisition of new knowledge and the continual upgrading of skills. Life is about learning. Learning is lifelong. Throughout my life, I got all the education that I could, continually repositioning myself for the next opportunities that would frequently and inevitably present themselves to me. The second reason why our future will not be like what we currently envision is that society is speeding along at a rapid rate. I remember, for example, watching reruns of the original Star Trek TV series when I was your age. Watching the program was part of my daily routine. I never thought that I would see those futuristic Star Trek technologies in my lifetime. They were technological uh, elements, after all, from the 23rd century. But Captain Kirk's communicator already exists. We each have one. NASA has developed the Star Trek food replicator. And an Ontario company has developed Dr. McCoy's tricorder, a handheld portable wireless device that monitors and diagnoses health conditions. Society and technology are speeding along, ahead of science fiction, ahead of our imaginations. I began my remarks with the story of my launch aboard the space shuttle Columbia. I have one more story to tell. Soon after our arrival on orbit, I recall my shuttle commander, Tom Henricks, 
gathering our crew together for a brief tag up before we headed into our laboratory to begin our research program. Tom said, I only have two things to say before we get down to work. First of all, our vehicle has arrived in space in good shape. We are a well-trained crew and we have a talented and dedicated team on the ground supporting our mission. There is no reason for us not to succeed. Therefore, if at any time over the next 17 days of flight, you find that you are not having fun, stop and reevaluate because you are undoubtedly doing something wrong. And secondly, if any of you ever leave the toilet dirty after use, Tom said, I will kill you. <laughs> so Tom's words to us were wise and they re reinforced our culture, a culture in which we take care of each other and a culture in which we are expected to perform at a high level but have fun at the same time. I'm pleased to accept this honorary degree. I'm proud to be associated with a university that inspires students to be collaborative and resilient leaders. I'm proud to be associated with a university that upholds the same educational values as I. To the 2019 graduates, I wish you fond memories of your time at Carleton University. Congratulations on a job well done. Let's embrace lifelong learning. Let's take care of each other and let's have fun. Thank you. <laughs>